Heroes of Normandy has a digital edition, and I'm going to give you an idea of the gameplay by walking you through the tutorial here on Legendary Tactics. So I came across a digital edition of Heroes of Normandy, which is a game I've been exploring uh, recently, and I thought I'd walk you through the digital tutorial. Now, the digital tutorial is, uh, in my opinion, not the best way to learn the game. Um, it does teach you the digital interface, and it teaches you the, uh, the some of the basic rules, but likely you are going to still need to uh, read the rule book. Um, there's just too much detail that can be covered in a, in a digital tutorial like this. And so the reality is this will give you a good sense of the gameplay and a good sense of some of the uh, interactions and so forth, but it's not going to uh, necessarily uh, give you the full picture, just so you know, just so I can set up, set expectations up front. So the primary objective of this first uh, tutorial mission is to eliminate uh, the other unit. And this is going to just uh, share a little bit about uh, um, orders, turns, movement, and fire, and and that's going to uh, uh, it's going to be fairly straightforward. So, um, in the orders uh, phase, you you choose your you assign your orders. You're given a certain number of orders based on the uh, units you have in play and uh, the scenario, and uh, then you you take action, which is either moving or firing with units where you gave an order, and then in the supply phase. You move uh, the units where where they did not have an order assigned to them. They can't shoot, but they can be moved. So you'll see what I mean in a sec. So we have two units and one fire order. Um, so we're going to assign that first order to uh, this uh, this unit here. Okay. Now you always have a bluff uh, order as well, um, but we're not going to bother with it in this uh, scenario, especially. Uh, uh, against the AI or whatever it doesn't mean anything in this case but they give you an extra order that uh, is blank and uh, just to kind of create a bit of fog of war so the the other players don't know um, what orders you've given and each of those orders are given a you know a number one two three four five and that's how they are resolved um, there's an initiative uh, thing where um, in this case the Americans start out with the initiative and then every turn that switches to the other side. So the next turn the Germans will have the initiative and that uh, resolves who goes first. Uh, obviously the number ones, uh, the number one uh, unit with the, or with the initiative will go first followed by the number one unit without the initiative and then two and then two, the three, three and so forth. So um, as I said, there's a lot in this uh, that they they don't really go into a lot of details. Very, it's very good if you kind of know the game already. But otherwise, um, I'm going to do a more extensive how to play uh, for this game at some point as well. So, um, which will cover all this stuff. So, um, we're going to uh, uh, take a look here now. There's a, a line of sight um, factor here that uh, uh, again they don't really cover in the tutorial but it's something that's really important for the game. Um, but just visually, you can see there's a hedgerow in between me and uh, the enemy unit. So uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to see the unit to fire. So instead, I'm going to move um, this unit here. And uh, entering a hedgerow, um, I need to stop. There's some terrain that has uh, different uh, qualities here. Um, and in the in this position, we're in cover and we can see the enemy, so we're in good shape. All right, and then um, with the terrain properties uh, on this interface, you can just right click and you will see the properties. You can see this has a plus two to defense value. Uh, only infantry can enter this area, no vehicles, uh, but infantry that do enter have to stop because they get bogged down and this area blocks line of sight. So these are all things that again, um, are covered more extensively in the rules. Uh, they kind of gloss over everything in this, and I don't blame them. There's a lot of stuff to get across in that uh, short period of time. Um, so I'm just going to play through and explain a, a little bit of the rules as I go, uh, but just more to give you a feel of the gameplay of the, the actual board game and then the uh, gameplay of the digital version of the board game as well. The nice thing is, is that you can view details on anything just by right-clicking, and it will show you what weapons they have and damage and all sorts of stuff like that. So 
Um, the game itself feels a little bit like Memoir 44 in some ways. So if you like Memoir 44, I think this would be a game you'd want to check out. Um, it, uh, it also has maybe an element of, say, older games like Squad Leader or something like that, although it's um, sort of much more streamlined in its design uh, that way. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe an element of Ambush as well, if you remember that old game from Victory Games. Um, so my, uh, my enemy moved into Cover. And uh, so now we go to the supply phase. And uh, the supply phase is where, again, you can move units that did not receive an order token, um, but they cannot fire. So we're just going to move up and advance this unit into position here. And uh, that's that. So turn two now. Now, this time the German player has the initiative. So uh, that player is going to go first. We're going to assign uh, uh, our one order token to uh, this unit. This other unit cannot fire though. That's going to be a limitation of the, uh, uh, you know, of that, uh, of the orders. You've only got so many orders to, to give. <laughs> and so um, they're going to uh, roll for fire. And that, I know that went by really quickly, um, but uh, uh, you'll have a, I'll, I'll be able to go over it a little more detail a little bit later in the tutorial. So um, now we can drag our uh, weapon. That's how we actually choose to fire on an enemy, is by dragging the weapon counter over to uh, and putting the target uh, on the unit. And now this is the interface here, the one that went by so quickly last time. So um, the five, which is taken from the sort of the center bottom of the enemy unit, is is that's the uh, the two hit, and the terrain that the uh, unit is in gives a plus one. So uh, we need to roll a six or more on our die. Um, our, we have a, a bonus uh, on our unit against infantry. It's the number that's uh, at the bottom and to the left, the plus two, and that uh, allows us to add two to our die. So in, in this case, we're going to need a four, five, or six. It actually breaks down the odds at the bottom, uh, at the bottom left here. So that's pretty handy so you know what your odds are. Um, the dies are, uh, they use lots of symbols and stuff. It a, takes a little bit of getting used to visually. Um, that is a six. So uh, six plus two is eight. We were greater than the enemy defensive uh, strength of, of, uh, of six there. So we uh, and it eliminate the, uh, the enemy unit. And uh, this, the, the interface, once you get used to it, is actually pretty uh, straightforward. It's, you know, few modifiers on the on the die roll but other than that it's actually a, a pretty straightforward firing system and um, elegant in in a way they have different values assigned to um, for fire against infantry fire against light vehicles fire against um, heavy vehicles and uh, I think it's a it's actually a, pr a pretty smooth it's one of my favorite parts of the design actually is how the uh, the, the combat is is handled. It really isn't that um, that heavy, and even introducing vehicles. Uh, I know for a game like Squad Leader, they took a while to build up to that one, um, but in this game, you can start with vehicles right away, and it's not really a lot of rules overhead to uh, to do so. So um, we're gonna start at this mission. We've got uh, a tank here. I'm gonna see if I can bring up. Uh, so. A little bit about the tank. There's lots of symbols, uh, you know, as you can see at the top. Uh, there's the cannon. Um, there's all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, unfortunately, the tutorial doesn't really delve into too much uh, about that. Uh, so it's a, a again, I don't blame the tutorial. There's a lot of a uh, lot of rules. A surprising number of rules to this game. They're not hard, but they there is uh, some rules overhead if you uh, are interested in this game. Just so you you know. Um, that that's the case. So I'm just going to move uh, this tank here and I'm going to swing it around like that. And you can actually see the uh, the tank uh, uh, do what it needs to do and swing around and get into position. So, um, and, and the, the tanks have a, one, a machine gun and a main gun as well, um, as most tanks do. And so in this case, uh, we are firing on the move. Uh, which is something that some units can do. Uh, I'll just see, uh, show you right here if I can. <clears throat> so there's, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but it, there's a 
a, a little blue arrow with a minus two written in red at the top. Um, that means it's able to fire on the move. So we're going to use the machine gun to fire on the move. Uh, there is a penalty to that. So we have a plus two against light vehicles. There's a minus two for fire on the move. So this is a straight roll. Then we need a four or more in order to get it. And there's a, like most tutorials, there's a lot of sixes rolled and uh, we create a wreck. And a wreck is uh, impassable and can be a, a line of sight uh, blocker and uh, you can push the wreck around and stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you can do there. Um, now our uh, enemy fires on us with the, the, the Puma um, and blasts us here and rolls their six and uh, and does some damage and hits us uh, in the does crew damage which means uh, we can't um, uh, we can't uh, we can only fire one weapon um, each turn even though we have a machine gun and a main gun we can only fire one um, there's different tank damage that can be uh, given uh, it's something that's uh, gives it you know kind of a nice flavor that way uh, but uh, they don't really go into a lot of explanation as to how all that works uh, again. So um, we're going to move on to the, the next turn. Um, we don't have, a, have to worry about a supply phase because we've only got one unit. And we have one order and we're assigning the order to that one unit. And so we're going to have to take another shot from the Puma because the Germans have the initiative. And they blast us, but fortunately uh, they miss and now we can return fire. So now we have our main cannon. We can drag that over to the, the vehicle. Now we've got a plus four against uh, magenta or light vehicles. So this is, uh, uh, now the defense on a Puma is an eight though. So we still need to roll four, five, or six. It's a 50-50 and we roll a five. So we blast that uh, Puma. In the, in the analog game, you actually just flip the counter over and uh, it's really actually a, a neat you know, mechanic because you have the destroyed vehicle on the other side with all the stats and everything uh, of a wreck. So that is uh, the next mission here. And uh, so anyway, vehicles are handled um, in a very straightforward way, I find, uh, which is refreshing. It's, it's not, uh, not too hard to integrate them into your missions. Um, so now we're uh, going to, um, this is, uh, this is kind of, the, the, the uh, little interaction uh, here is kind of funny. Uh, basically, the, the, the files for the tutorial have been stolen, and so <laughs> we have to recover them so we can continue the tutorial. Otherwise, uh, as Clint says, we're going to have terrible reviews on Steam. So this is, uh, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so we're going to uh, send a recon squad and learn about ambushing and spotting. So I thought, thought uh, they're having some fun with the tutorial uh, here. So And uh, so this one, we have to get to that, uh, that files uh, square with uh, one of our units. And uh, so we have to be able to figure out how to uh, get around that panzer, though, because that panzer is going to be uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty hard, and then we've also got two recon units, uh, enemy recon units that are uh, hidden, and you can see one of our recon units are hidden as well. That sets up a potential ambush. All right, so um, now we need to spot the enemy recons, and in order to do that, you need to be in line of sight of one of the units, and so we spot that unit. Now we can't spot the other unit. If the, if the recon, the, the hidden concealed unit is in any sort of terrain, we need to be within two spaces to spot uh, that unit. So we're going to move closer. All right. And now we spot that unit. And with that, we decide to retreat. And you can move diagonally in this uh, game. They don't use hexes, but uh, you can move diagonally. So it's kind of an interesting uh, design choice there. Um, so we are now going to flip that unit over um, to set up an, an ambush. Um, and vehicles cannot spot concealed units. And so if you have units that are completely concealed, then you uh, can't, um, 
they can't there's nothing that can be done and because the enemy units I, i'm in terrain and the enemy units are um two more than two spaces away then they cannot uh react or they can't see me actually i should say and reveal me so um, i'm going to shoot from my concealed position this is uh, actually i'll just zoom zoom out here uh so this is from the the unit that is uh, uh the other unit from uh down below there it's not letting me move down so just have to take my word for it but that one unit is going to reveal and uh get a gets a lucky roll there he is gets a lucky roll and uh um ends up uh, wiping out that enemy recon unit. Now the only problem is is that uh, when that a unit fires, they reveal their position. So um, I'm no longer uh, hidden, and so um, I'm probably going to have to face that panzer uh, next time. So the enemy recon just uh, use it in their supply phase, just moves that recon unit and um, and, uh, and and flips over into the ambush mode. And uh, the panzer is going to get the first move and is going to fire on the move. And unfortunately, rules what they need to eliminate us. So that's unfortunate. However, they left the files wide open, so we're, go we're just going to race in and grab the files for the win. <laughs> so, um, I, I, the one thing I do appreciate is that the missions in this are very brief. Uh, they do get the basic point across, but they don't overstay their welcome. Um, and in some, some cases they actually finish quite, uh, surprisingly quickly, almost, uh, like you expect to be, you're, you know, you're going to be in for a longer haul and you're not at all. <laughs> so it's just takes a, uh, you know, 30 seconds to, uh, you know, to finish the, uh, the mission and uh, you're expecting all oh, this might take a little bit no nope. it, then it w wraps itself up so this is a simple mission we've got a four units there and a, and a vehicle and we just have to uh, wipe everyone out so this is going to uh, uh, another puma again with a defense value of eight and these four units are really close together as it happens so that uh, sets them up for a potential uh, attack by grenade and now uh, so we're going to demonstrate the uh, um, the uh, indirect fire, I guess you could say. So we've got to assign uh, our orders to those two units. And um, so we're going to th uh, throw one of these rifle grenades. Now the grenades, if you'll notice, they hit what they call an interspace. So it's an intersection or between two spaces, and that's how they determine their area of effect. So uh, one grenade then will, will hit those four uh, units if it hits. Now uh, we have to roll for scatter because uh, that site is out of the line of sight of the units that's uh, throwing the grenade and so we need to roll five or six for it to actually land in the proper hex. So we'll see how that goes. And we roll a four so it actually blows up um, in the wrong spot. Uh, unfortunately um, there's no one there so doesn't do any damage but that's obviously because it was out of uh, out of sight um, so there's nothing much we could do there now the the grenades and everything interestingly are abstracted in terms of how they are uh, assigned to units if they are in possession of the unit then everyone has them uh, whether they actually you don't have to actually say oh this unit is carrying this grenade or anything like that it's just kind of a shared uh, inventory so it makes it you know, a lot easier to keep track of that sort of thing. So um, this recon unit uh, didn't want to reveal um, themselves, but they're going to use the, uh, the rifle grenade. Now, we don't need to worry about scatter uh, because um, the, unit, the enemy units are in sight. So uh, we actually roll four different firing actions, four different dice, one for each unit. And as it happens, we roll quite well we only needed three or more for each of them so we launch the grenade and it blows up all the units so grenades if are very handy especially if you've got a uh, <laughs> a lot of um, units enemy units packed into a small space uh, and once again the recon had to reveal themselves so uh, the, the it's now the supply phase so we we can move but we can't um, 
we can't shoot with this unit. Now this is a 30 cal uh, um, unit and uh, there's a little arrow, you see the circular arrows here. This is kind of a neat thing. So this is a, a tripod unit. So um, the stats right now are unimpressive, right? Zero, zero and X. <laughs> so zero against infantry, zero against light vehicles and they can't fire against heavy vehicles at all. Um, however, um, if we set up the tripod, which is done by clicking this here, flips over the uh, the unit, and now we get three plus three against infantry, plus two against light vehicles, and uh, we get all of these cool suppressive fire abilities and all this other stuff. So um, it's definitely it. You can do that uh, once per activation. So you can uh, pack up your tripod and move, or you can move and then set up your tripod, uh, for example. And uh, so it's a it's kind of a neat. Uh, uh, a neat little mechanic there. The way they get a lot of the variety of uh, of units into such a small kind of space, you know, they really uh, have a lot of, uh, uh, of of detail baked into the game in a very efficient way. It's kind of a, a neat thing. Is you, you right out of the gate, you get handed recon units and thirty cals, and you know, and and the mechanics make it so that they're not that hard to implement. Um, so, all right, so we're going to, uh, the Puma goes first because the Germans have the initiative. And uh, the Puma fires with their the cannon on our recon unit and blows it to smithereens. So that is uh, unfortunate. Um, but uh, we're going to now use our 30 caliber. Uh, the Puma has a defense of 8, uh, so we've got a plus 2. Uh, on that, so we need to roll a six because six plus two is eight. Oh, and what luck! We managed to um, to to destroy it uh, with our uh, uh, with our thirty cal tripod. So um, so anyway, that's uh, obviously a lucky roll. As I said, sometimes sometimes these scenarios end a lot quicker than you expect. But you, you can see how the game would in real life would uh, take a little bit more time to complete there'd be a you wouldn't have that luck <laughs> every single time all right so now we're just uh just about done the last uh the last two are, are not that um not that involved uh, we got the last day of school and uh they're going to uh talk about assault and uh and grenades in buildings as well so this is something that is uh Pretty interesting, pretty interesting uh, kind of way to do uh, combat as well. It's very useful. Um, so the uh, the mission basically is to just uh, you know kill all the bad guys here, <laughs> and we're also going to learn about suppressive fire, which is uh, a very interesting and useful tactic uh, in this kind in this game. So we're going to assign our orders to this support team and to the fire unit. Okay, <clears throat> then click on proceed. The um, Germans get those orders, and so we're going to uh, look to uh, do an assault to demonstrate that. Now, an assault is uh, kind of a difficult thing to do, so you want to, one of the things that the, the tutorial suggests is to do suppressive fire in advance of that. So the suppressive fire gives you uh, double your combat uh, value. I don't know if you can see, but this is a plus two to infantry, but in this, uh, because of the uh, the fact it's suppressive fire, it doubles uh, the value. So we have a plus four to this roll. The enemy's defense is five plus two for the building. So we have to roll a three or more in order to uh, to get this uh, to happen. So when uh, so we managed to get a, a, a hit. Now it doesn't do any damage, but what it does is it is it puts a suppression marker on them. And that's minus two to every die roll uh, for that unit. And they can get multiple suppression markers uh, sometimes as well. So um, now that unit's going to fire back and uh, unfortunately uh, eliminated us um, because our, our uh, enemy had already been hit once and was wounded. So some, some units will take more than, uh, than one hit. So we're going to charge in and assault uh, here and uh, with an assault we get to roll two dice we choose the best one uh, that we like uh, but uh, you can see it's a uh, it's the the combat value is four 
uh, for the enemy, minus two for suppression, plus two for the building. So it kind of cancels that out. Um, we get two dice, but uh, we're we're going to uh, uh, roll the dice, and whoever gets the, the higher roll, if the attacker wins, the defender takes a hit and retreats. If the defender wins, the attacker takes a hit and stops. So uh, we're going to see what happens here. And fortunately, we uh, managed to uh, get the combat value there <laughs> of, with, uh, with our six. And uh, so we uh, take that... Uh, take out that uh, other unit. So, uh, you know, basically, there's uh, it's a good idea to do suppressive fire in advance because otherwise, it's, especially if the enemy unit's in a in a, a building, it's going to be a bit tricky. So this uh, uh, commander, this hero here, Stuart, um, will go to the supply box. And this is where the shared inventory thing is kind of interesting. So picks up some uh, grenades, three grenades, that get added to the, the inventory. Um, and now that is shared with this unit over here. <laughs> so as I said, it is abstracted in that sense. So um, in order to use the the, uh, the uh, grenade inside a building, we need to be next to the building. Uh, you can't uh, throw a grenade for, like a football, <laughs> you know, 100 yards down the field. Uh, so uh, we're going to want to... Um, use this unit right away and this one here as a backup okay now the enemy has the initiative so what does the enemy do do well defensive fire and hits our unit now our unit has um, a weaker side though in this case so uh, some units will have uh, two steps or life points as they say so it's still alive uh, even though um, the unit took one hit, so a bit tougher than that. And we're going to use the grenade. And once again, the grenade is in the intersection between hexes, and because this is a building, it's not on a on a on a point. It's uh, between four hexes. It'll just be shared between the two. And so we roll our die here, and each uh, unit, each enemy gets a a die roll, uh, and uh, unfortunately, they both. Uh, ended up being wiped out <laughs> so uh, so that's kind of how a, a, a grenade works uh, again so many more rules that you do need to review in the rule book but but certainly if you are playing this game though the rules enforcement will certainly help uh, because you won't be allowed to do a move that is not uh, technically allowed and I think that that is a, uh, a really good thing so so you can actually probably play this game without reading a heck of a lot of rules uh, because the game does all the calculations and you can, uh, you know, just see what the different uh, shots are going to do or what the movement would uh, uh, accomplish or do you have to stop or does it give you an option to uh, use a tripod or conceal or whatever. And so you can probably do okay, but uh, ultimately I think this is the, it's the better, better way to go. Um, so we are just about to protect the headquarters here. We've got a jeep and our, one of our characters, the rock. And what this uh, scenario is mainly to teach you is the combat card, or the action cards. And so uh, in the game, depending on the scenario and whether you want them, you can add these action cards. So they'll, they'll give you little bonuses like you can move your move a unit uh, to additional spaces. You can ignore the restrictions of rough terrain. Uh, you can roll one more die and uh, you can, uh, take a, a suppressed marker instead of a hit uh, on a vehicle. And these are uh, drawn up to the hand limit every turn. So they actually encourage you to use them every turn. Like there's no downside. You don't need to save them necessarily. Uh, you can use them um, as you get them and you'll, you'll always get a, a fresh crop of more. Now the rock is actually stuck here. Um, the rock has uh, only uh, two, um, movement points. I don't know if you can see here the, the two with the up arrow in blue. So uh, there's not a lot of uh, movement available. However, we happen to have this uh, all terrain, which means that the unit ignores the restrictions of rough terrain. And that's perfect. Um, yeah, because this is uh, um, infantry what must stop uh, entering the hedgerow here. So it's a good idea to, uh, you know, to get the rock um, no, oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so the hedgerows can't uh, stop uh, the, the rock anymore. So 
Uh, so the rock is going to advance there. And you might say, well, the, the headquarters is here. The rock needs to defend that. Yes, but we have a combat uh, action card. So now the rock has a move and uh, uh, move fire on the move ability or run and gun ability at a minus one penalty. So we're going to see if that uh, allows us to take out uh, this uh, enemy unit. With the modifiers, it's a plus two. So we, need, we have a 50-50 chance and we totally miss. So that's unfortunate. And uh, so now the the rock is uh, stuck out there outside the uh, the headquarters, and the rock spent all there all of his movement points. However, as it happens, we have the advance card, and we can play that to give the rock some movement uh, points. And now we're in a really uh, good spot. We're very uh, in a very defensible position. So that's good. So the jeep though is is fragile. And uh, so the, the way we're going to use a reaction card, the it bounced right off uh, cards. So uh, the react reaction cards work a bit differently. You have to select a target and they don't have an immediate effect. Um, so uh, let's play it bounced right off it, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can transform a hit into a suppressed marker. And uh, we're going to play this and choose the, uh, the Jeep as the target of that card. So that uh, could be a big help, and uh, and that is tied to the jeep. So um, we're done all we can for now, and uh, the enemy targets us. But fortunately, what would have otherwise been a kill ends up being a suppression uh, marker. So um, that was good. So we've got to fire back. Um, and uh, so we need to, a bit of help here. So we're going to use the American way of life to roll one more die. And uh, we're going to attack this unit and retaliate right back. And uh, so with the suppression, it's not as advantageous, but we still have a pretty decent chance of, uh, of uh, getting a four, five, or six. Oh, he missed, but luckily the American way of life card gave us a second die, which was the difference and uh, as you might have expected uh, so the uh, the enemy is moving around here um, we don't have any other unit to move in the supply phase so we're going to um, move on, move onward here um, the enemy moves on their supply phase uh, up front there and uh, so they assign their orders and we're going to look at our next crop of action cards. So we've got a return to sender, where if a grenade is launched near one of the targeted units, it will be sent back one interspace. Um, bullet storm, a couple of bullet storms, adding plus one to your shot, and burst into action. So the unit gains fire in the move uh, ability with no penalty for this activation. So that's a pretty cool one, actually. So they've got a lot of sort of uh, Hollywood-esque uh, things. I think their, their goal is to be Memoir 44, with a Hollywood twist, you know, so there's a little bit of that, you know, hero, you know, you need to roll a six and a sort of dramatic uh, roll there and everything. Um, and uh, so I think that's a, it's a, it's kind of got that flair to it that they're, they're aiming for. Now the rock takes a hit, uh, luckily uh, has a, a, a reduced side. And uh, so we got to worry about the, the grenade another grenade coming in so we're going to use return to sender we're going to play it on the rock and now uh, the rock is protected against that eventuality now let's use the rock to shoot and uh, we've got a plus three so we need a three four five or six on this roll we got a four so that's perfect and there we go now that the the game interface here is actually I think uh, reasonably uh, reasonably good. Oh, and here we go. The return to sender blows them both up. <laughs> so um, I was just about to say the the uh, interface is reasonably good. It seems a little bit busy if you don't know what's going on. Um, and I, I so I recommend the analog game certainly to uh, make sure you got a good grasp of the rules and the gameplay. 
Uh, but I think this uh, interface is a, is a fun way to, uh, to try out this game as well. And uh, I would just recommend, as I said, don't lean on the tutorial too much. Read the rules and then use the tutorial as a refresher or reinforcement of those rules. So anyway, I hope you got some value out of this uh, little walkthrough and got a sense of the gameplay of Heroes of Normandy. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you here next time on Legendary Tactics.